How's it going everyone? Before I start this video, I would like to thank Mythos from Frost and Fist. He sent me the miniature to make this tutorial and uh, please go and check his channel out. He has very good videos with battle reports, tutorials, reviews and, and things like that. So pay a visit, I will leave the link for his channel in the description below so that you can check it out. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to paint Ariman from the Horus Heresy Burning of Prospero set. This is a very cool model and very detailed. I went with a true red color scheme that I think it better reflects the artwork for the Thousand Suns. This is not a metallic color scheme but it's still pretty good and it'll help you paint your Thousand Suns to a reasonable painting standard. If you like this video please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click that bell to don't miss any of my coming videos. I will start with priming the model gray. You can use any primer that you like. This is the one I had in hand. Uh, light color is better for uh, getting uh, good coverage with red fast. And what I did, I didn't assemble the model completely. I left the cape and backpack off. Uh, you could have uh, get the helmet off as well because it's a little hard to paint behind the, the head. But I'm gonna start with painting with P3 paint. I'm going to use uh, K Kator red base and with this I'm going to cover the whole uh, armor of the miniature. I like this red a lot. It's a very bright red without being too orange as Evil Suns. It's somewhere in between the Evil Suns and uh, Mephiston red because Mephiston red is a little bit too dark for, in my opinion for painting such a bright color scheme so I went with that. Don't forget to thin down your colors and what I'm going to do next I'm going to line all of the shadows with Agrax Airshade with a detail brush, just paint in the crevices to uh, give this a little more uh, depth to the model. Uh, trying to keep the, the other places clean. If you don't, you can come back and clean it up. And if you want a darker color scheme as in the set and the pictures from Games Workshop, you can paint it Mephiston Red instead. And it's pretty much the same method, uh, just a different color of the base. Next, I'm going to use Wild Rider Red. And with this color, I'm going to align all of the edges that I can find around the model. There's not too many because uh, most of the edges are covered with detail. And this uh, process is not, it's not that uh, time consuming as with other models. Uh, make sure to thin down your color. I've used, I'm using a little bit of a drying retarder, liquid drying retarder to make the paint uh, stay wet for longer so that I can color those edges quick. After that, I'm going to use Fire Dragon Bright and I'm going to color in all of the uh, sharpest edges of the red. This is going to give it a very fiery glow and make it stand out a little bit more than uh, how it is. What I don't like about red is that uh, it's very hard to capture the true color of the red uh, on camera. If you do it yourself, you're gonna notice that it looks very good. This is one of the best uh, reds in my opinion without getting too dark. I'm going to use Vallejo model color black to paint all of the joints in between the armor and all of the places that you want to be black. There aren't too many, also the back of the cape is black and the staff I think. Uh, but uh, I'm using a small detail brush to paint all the details and you can play, paint the edges of large places like the cape and then switch to a larger brush to brush the whole thing. Next I'm going to use Lead Belcher and with this color I'm going to give a little coat to all of the places that I want to be silver. Uh, this is very straightforward, still using a small detail brush because I don't want to mess it up and I want to paint all these small details without any problems. Um, a large brush, a number two brush with a fine tip can work too. Uh, I just uh, got this uh, brush and it's, I, think I find it easier to control even though you can't get uh, enough paint on it to paint large areas. Next I'm going to use sand reed dust and I'm going to paint all of the um, the cape and all of the cloth around the model. I'm going to go with a bone color, typical bone color and just uh, very quickly just paint it without trying to get into other places. If you do like I did there, uh, you can come back and clean it up with black or whatever color you messed up. After that's done, I'm going to use Retributor Armor and I'm going to continue blocking the colors on this mint model just to have all the colors laid out 
Uh, this is a very uh, yellowish, uh, very nice, uh, rich gold color. And I'm going to uh, paint it all over the uh, yellow um, gold around the, around the model. Here I use, I'm using a number two brush. You can use any brush you like. On small, on small details, I like to use a diesel brush on places that are larger, that need a lot more paint. I would like to have a, a little bit more fat brush that can carry more paint with it. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and use dried bark to paint the holster of the gun and uh, the leather things that hold the scrolls together. Uh, I think the normal model has this in black. You can go with black if you want, but uh, I went with brown. It's just a little, one more color to use. Doesn't doesn't matter too much. Next, I'm going to use Celeste Gray, and with this color, I'm going to continue blocking the colors and paint all of the symbols that I want to be white. Uh, this gray is a very good base coat for the white to cover over. So uh, very quickly and very carefully with the detail brush, just paint uh, all of these surfaces very quickly. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and use Nolan Oil and I'm going to start washing. Uh, for this, I'm going to use it on the silver and I'm going to use it on the edges of the white. And in between all of the places that you would think it could use a little bit of shading, um, here and there doesn't really matter if you, if some places it's uh, Not as dark as you would like on uh, the edges. You can use a little bit of this But uh, pretty much just the silver and the edges of the white After that's done, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and with this color I'm going to shade the robes don't show don't shade the whole thing because that'll uh, make you uh, clean up a lot so I'm just going to shade in the whole scrolls and uh, the crevices on the cape and things like that. You don't really have to shade the whole thing because uh, you're going to come back and clean it up. Just shade the edges and shade the crevices and that's it. Once that's done, I'm going to use Rayclan Flesh Shade. And with this color, I'm going to shade uh, all of the gold parts of the armor. Again, you can save a little bit of time just uh, shading the details and not the whole thing. But in some places, you you kind of have to shade the whole thing. Like in these little uh, horns in the back and uh, the medallion in the middle. kind of do have to get that uh, shade all over the place. It doesn't matter because you're gonna you can come back and clean it up. After that's done, I'm going to use Sandry Dust just to clean up the robes again a little bit because I used a little bit too much. I'm going to start cleaning up. And being very careful from this step forwards because I don't want to mess up all of the other colors. I mean, all of the colors are blocked. I, are, all of the colors are colored in and we have all the shadows laid out. From here on out, it's just cleaning up and highlighting to uh, make a little bit more interesting uh, uh, highlights to the model pretty much. Ushaptivon is the c next color just to uh, accentuate all of the largest areas on the model. I am kind of painting a large part of the robes just uh, the places that are more standing out and that are uh, facing up and that are for folding out of the cape and with Screaming Skull I'm going to come back and just uh, do the edges real quick and that's gonna be it for the ropes. It's pretty easy, pretty standard. Also, when you, you're doing um, edge highlighting, you can use a little bit of drying retarder to help the paint stay wet for longer. That makes the edge highlighting way easier for me. Here I'm coming, I'm coming back with Retributor Armor and cleaning up all these places uh, of gold that got stained with the wash. And this is going to bring back the shine and make it look a lot more uh, cleaner and pristine to make the, this color look very bright and uh, glorious gold, I don't know. Liberator Gold 
Uh, I've had some problems with this paint because it's a little bit too... Uh, it separates a lot. Uh, but make sure to shake it well and paint all of the edges with the gold just to give it a, a highlight. It, was very, it works very well as a highlight, but it's also... Uh, it tones down the yellow color of the armor as well. So make sure to use it uh, on the edges to tone down a little bit of the yellowness of the gold if you want. Now I'm going to use Iron Breaker and with this color I'm going to color in all of the metallic areas that are silver again and covering most of the area just leaving the crevices on the shaded lead belcher. This is because I want a little bit more shiny uh, silver instead of a worn out uh, old uh, silver. And to finish it up and because we're doing this at uh, the same time I'm going to use Runefang Steel to shading all of the edges of the of the silver and all of the edges of the gold. Not all of the edges of the gold, just the more sharpest one, just just to give it a little bit extra uh, brightness to the gold. Uh, don't use it too much because if you use too much it, it kind of takes away from the gold effect uh, and that's it. Ultimate Gray I'm going to use to color in all of the places that I want it to be white just very quickly, uh, th thin down the color and paint uh, the whole surface of this uh, color to make it look white. This is just a laying down the color to, to for white. This is not white yet until now. I'm, I'm going to use model color white. And uh, this is a niche highlight and painting the most uh, most erased parts of the white, not the whole thing. This is going to give a little bit more three dimensionality to the white if you leave a little bit of that those two colors behind. Scrap brown, I'm going to use to uh, color in all of the leather parts that I painted on this model. If you choose more areas to paint this way, you can use this color. This is just a niche highlight. I'm going to leave the very dark brown color to look in, in these uh, areas. And following it up with uh, Deathclaw brown to color all of the uh, more strong, uh, sharpest edges. Now I'm going to move on to the black. For that, I'm going to choose the cape, and with ashen gray, I'm going to color, color all of the uh, most protruded uh, areas on the cape, just to give this um, areas a highlight. You don't really have to go all out on the black. You can do it if you want, but the less uh, highlight you do to the black, the better, because it'll not take away from the black effect of the cape. Next, I'm going to use Dawnstone. Did I say it right? Dawn? Yeah. All right. I'm going to use this on the sharpest edges of the black and the places that most, most reflect light. Just don't go overboard with it. And uh, I'm using it around the whole model, not only on the cape. I used it on the staff. I used it on all the places that are going to be black. And here I'm using Temple Guard Blue. And uh, this color, I'm going to color in all of the places that I want to be glowing blue. But don't worry too much about it, just slap it on inside of these uh, crevices. Uh, it kind of needs to uh, cover the whole thing. And it's going to be a very bright blue. You could go for a darker blue if you like. I'm also going to use it to color in all of the places that I want to be uh, blue. Like uh, these uh, details here on the, on the end of the robe and uh, the little uh, squares on the, on the blade. Next I'm going to mix a little bit of white with it and uh, kind of get a middle tone between this uh, Temple Guard Blue and white and uh, just color edge highlight all of the edges around these glowing parts. This is going to make it look a little bit more uh, glowy. And if you use a little bit too much like I did, you can come back and clean up with the gold if you want. And after that I'm going to use just pure white and color in the center of these parts that are going to be glowing blue and the eyes just to make them stand out. So that's it, this is my Ariman model and I like it a lot. Even though I don't collect uh, Thousand Suns, uh, I think I did a pretty decent job at it and I like how it looks. I like the true red, bright red color that I used for this model and I hope you do too. And it can be used for uh, Blood Angels if you like, for world eaters or any other bright red color you would like to use this is a very good choice and let me know what you think i hope you found this tutorial helpful and entertaining 
and that it maybe gave you some ideas on painting your thousand suns. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe, that really helps my channel out and also click that bell so that you don't miss any of my coming tutorials. Thanks again to Mythos from Frost and Fists. Thank you for sending me this model, now I have an Ariman model and I wasn't going to buy that set, so thank you very much for that. And that's it, check out Frost and Fists and that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you on the next one. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel, you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing, but you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.